Lord has given me a word for you, and I hope you will be listening. This is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter because the Lord is the avenger of all such. As we also forewarned you and testified, for God did not call us to uncleanness, but in holiness. Therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man, but God, who has also given us his Holy Spirit. This is 1 Thessalonians 4, 3 through 8. This is a very serious word. Holy Spirit, through the Apostle Paul, is saying you must abstain from sexual immorality. Do you hear? Do you hear this? Please, please listen carefully. The Lord does not want to bring guilt and condemnation to those who are truly, genuinely turning away from their sin and trying to get this right. The Lord is with you. He's helping you. And let this be an encouragement for you to press on to complete victory. Do you hear? God, He is urgently speaking to those who are making excuses and justifying themselves. I hope that you're going to stay listening because this is a serious warning. In the New Testament, the word most often translated as sexual immorality is pornea. And you know that from that Greek word, we get the word pornography. It's also translated as fornication and idolatry. I want you to think about that for a minute. And it's primarily used for premarital sex. Sexual immorality involves any type of sexual expression, including sexual perversion, that is aside from the boundaries of biblically defined marriage. Brothers and sisters, this is a serious word. In the fall of 1993, the Lord showed me Isaiah 60, verse 1 and 2, and he confirmed it three times, just like he confirmed this word three times. And I'm telling you, please, hear the word of the Lord. Now, for those of you who haven't, uh, don't know Isaiah 60, hear this. Arise and shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Behold, darkness covers the earth, and gross darkness is people's. But the Lord will rise upon thee, and his glory will be seen upon thee. Now this scripture is an announcement of revival. But the, there's also a very clear truth contained therein. And it lets us know how this revival is actually going to um, come forth. It is going to come forth in the midst of darkness, even gross darkness. And believe me, I thought it was dark in 1993, but my God, the darkness has really grown darker over these past 25 years. America has the discarded biblical truth and replaced it with um, their own form of godliness. They invented humanism. I could talk about several forms of darkness, but today the Lord is clearly calling me to speak about sexual immorality. America is now promoting sensuality and sexual lust like never before. It's on the TV, the movies, in the streets, on the billboard, in the bars. It is, you know, I don't have to tell you. 
but perhaps you don't know this. School children are being taught that sexual perversion is good and normal. They're being taught, I'm talking about grade school children are being taught this in school and they're even being shown graphic pictures. And the Boy Scouts of America are having a World Jamboree gathering this year in West Virginia. And it was reported in the Washington Times a few days ago that the leadership of the Boy Scouts is making condoms readily available and accessible. What? Are you kidding me? What has happened? What has America come to? Believe me, the darkness has really gotten very dark. And God is getting angry. And I'm standing here telling you this because the Lord told me to come before this camera and say it. Now, we know that the enemy has always tried to draw God's children away through sexual immorality. That's not new. But today, there is an all-out attack. And many Christians have been taken captive. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, we are at war. And at this juncture in time, the enemy is winning. Seventy percent of all men who call themselves Christian are viewing pornography. And 30% of the women. And in addition to that, there are many in the church who think that having sex before marriage is okay. They think that looking at pornography is okay. They think that same sex marriage and all kinds of sexual perversion is okay because they're listening to what the culture is doing instead of hearing from the pulpit that this is not okay. And I want to encourage pastors and leaders uh, to preach the Word of God, not with anger and meanness, but with love and with truth, so that this next generation will know it's not about what the culture says, it's about what the Word of God says. Those are couples, many of them, live together without being married. Christians! But it is not okay. Now God has told me to set a trumpet to my mouth and to warn you. I know that I know that he has told me this. But if you think that I'm some kind of angry, holier-than-thou person, you know, uh, standing on a pedestal of self-righteousness, you don't know me. Some of you have heard my testimony. I have been broken and crushed so many times because of my sins. You know, in my earlier life, I probably committed more sins than any of you, including sexual sins. But the Lord has healed me and delivered me, and he wants to do the same for you. And so I stand here as the Lord's mouthpiece saying, flee from sexual sin. Don't watch TV shows and movies or, or read books with sexual themes, even if it's not porn. What you've done is you've somehow excused yourself and said, well, it's not porn, so I can look at this. I can look at these swimsuit ads. I can look at this underwear commercial. Take your, train your eyes to turn away from any woman or man who's immodestly dressed. And you also need to know that you shouldn't be dressing sexy. If you're a Christian, you shouldn't be doing that. You realize that you may be causing others to sin and you may be held accountable for that and if you're married and there's someone at work or school or even church that you're being attracted to break that relationship now too many fools have said I can handle this and then they continue to flirt and then they fall into sin, and then they lose everything. And this also applies to singles who are flirting with married men or married women. And are you still looking at porn? Don't be so foolish. There are serious consequences. The Lord equates this with adultery and if you continue 
you will not inherit the kingdom of God. Do you understand? God is very serious and he does not want you to be caught in this web, in this bondage. You know that even after your repentance, that these images can stay in your mind and even when you're trying to get intimate with God and pray that these things will come back to you and you have to wrestle with this. I also want to know that you can ruin your marriage by looking at adultery, uh, at, at, at pornography, because it is adultery. Your wife or your husband finds out, they're going to be crushed. Their heart will be broken. They might even divorce you. And don't think they'll never find out, because I want you to know that God will give you time to repent, but then he'll expose your sin. Why? Because he'll allow you to be crushed and broken and even lose everything if it means the salvation of your soul. I'm going to tell you this word again. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all such, the Lord. You hear what I'm saying? As we also forewarned you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanness, but in holiness. Therefore, he who rejects this, rejects this word, rejects what I'm saying, does not reject me, does not reject man, but God, who has also given us his Holy Spirit. Do you understand? those Christians who make excuses and justify their sexual sins are rejecting God. This is a very serious word from the Lord. He loves you and he wants to set you free. Remember that the word for repentance, metanoia, means to turn around to change your mind, to go in the other direction. God does not want you to just come and say, I'm sorry, God, and then continue doing it tomorrow or next week. He is telling you now to truly repent of your sins, to make an effort to turn away. If you have to cut the internet, if you have to get into a support group, if you have to become accountable to somebody so that uh, they can pray for you and, and, and you can confess your sins to them. The Lord wants to heal you, but he also is very adamant that you repent of your sins. Do whatever it takes. If you purpose in your heart to do that, then you can pray with me right now. Lord Jesus, thank you for suffering and dying on the cross for me. Thank you that you have carried my sin at an enormous expense of your own torture. I choose now to turn away from these sins. With your help, by your grace, I'll do what it takes. I ask this in Jesus' name. To the extent that you have truly repented, I can announce God's grace to you. Your sins are forgiven. Now take action. In Jesus' name. Amen. We'll talk to you again.